Abuse cases involving vulnerable elderly has seen a decline from 127 cases in 2019 to 96 last year. But even though the overall figure went down, there were more cases with more than one type of abuse, including instances of physical abuse and neglect. And in particular, there were also a 30, there was a 30% rise in cases that involved psychological or emotional abuse. For a closer look, we're joined by Associate Professor Andy Ho from the School of Social Sciences at Nanyang Technological University. Professor Ho, most elder abuse cases that were investigated by MSF involved physical abuse or neglect. What is behind that? Well, I think one of the primary reasons that physical abuse and neglect are more often reported than psychological or emotional abuse is that physical abuse is much more visible to the naked eye. When victims, mm -hmm. friends, families, and neighbors can visibly see physical injuries, they're more likely to become aware of something is wrong. They may begin to ask questions that empowers the victim to share their story, which can then lead to detection and formal reporting of abuse. Physical abuse is also often de detected by healthcare professionals, such as doctors, nurses, and dentists who are much more sensitive to identifying physical injuries, and particularly facial injuries, those inside our oral cavity. So physical sign of injury and physiological deterioration is one major contributing factor for, psycho for physical abuse and neglect to be most commonly reported cases in Singapore. Uh, Professor, we are also seeing an increase in cases involving psychological or emotional abuse, things that you can't see. Uh, what could have contributed to that and how concerning is the rise? Well, first of all, I think it's encouraging to see there's a slight decrease in the number of elderly abuse cases last year. But we must treat the statistics with caution because I suspect there's a large number of underreporting, especially for psychological, emotional abuses cases that where there's no physical sign of injuries. Underreporting may also be due to the taboo of the abuse, just shame and sense of embarrassment felt by victims who don't want to air the dirty laundries in public and choose rather to choose to suffer in silence or that the victims are being isolated by the perpetrators. So no one knows that abuse has taken place. As for the reason for the increase for psychological emotional abuse cases reported, it may well be due to the fact that we as a people in Singapore are now much more aware of the mental health issue given how the pandemic has taken a toll on all of us. And we're much more knowledgeable about what, is, what constitutes poor mental health. So more awareness and knowledge can definitely lead to better detection and reporting for sure. Professor Ho, many of these elderly, they live with caregivers who themselves might be suffering from certain mental illnesses. They might be depressed themselves. Uh, based on your experience, uh, tell us what constitutes psychological or emotional abuse. At what point might that line be crossed? Well, there are many examples of psychological and emotional abuse, and perhaps some of the most common ones a manipulation and dictatorship, whereby the perpetrator wants to control every aspect of the victim's life, isolating the victim and refusing them from any form of social contact and support, turning others against the victim by spreading rumors and lies that undermine the character, belittling them, degrading the victim's self-esteem and making them feel worthless about themselves, blaming the victim for all the wrongs in the world, inflicting guilt on the victim, making them feel like they have, they have been ungrateful for all the things that the perpetrator have done for them, and gaslighting, where the perpetrator insists that certain conversation has never taken place, therefore the, making the victim question their own mem memory and sanity. All of these behaviors are unacceptable in any relationship. And while every family could have the occasional argument, but when one party begins to degrade, belittle, and inflict emotional and psychological pain on another party with viciousness, this is where we need to draw the line. Professor Ho, thank you very much for your thoughts on this issue of elder abuse. We've been speaking there to Associate Professor Andy Ho from the School of Social Sciences at Nanyang Technological University.